So I know I'm not the only one who has a problem with their RV toilet flushing. It just doesn't work. Well, today I'm going to try an experiment to see if I can improve on that. Stay tuned. So question, if you own an RV, does your toilet not function as well as you'd like it to? Does it just kind of not rinse well enough? You know, there's no holding tank and usually RVs have less than adequate pressure. Mine is running it uh, when I'm off city water is at 45 PSI, which really isn't enough to make the flushing mechanism of the toilet work. And when my RV is perfectly level, when I've got full 45 PSI for the water pressure, the toilet still doesn't rinse very well. It leaves a lot to be desired and a lot left behind. So today I'm going to do an experiment where I'm going to be adding a hand sprayer to act as a rinse for maybe to substitute for the water that would be at home in a holding tank. Hi, if we haven't met yet, I'm John with Let's Go Now Adventures. And we create videos all about camping. Whether you're into tent camping or RV camping, we just hope to make your camping experience a little bit better. And today, I'm doing an experiment to see if I can make my camping experience in my RV any better by improving on the function of the toilet by adding a hand sprayer. And so I'm gonna use the sprayer for after you flush then all you have to do is take the sprayer and spray and do a quick rinse, flush again, and in theory, you should be good. We'll see how it works. You know, there are RV toilets that are already made with this feature. There are also better RV toilets that you can pick up that actually have a decent flushing mechanism, but those things can be expensive. And you know, what I want to do is I want to make the one that I already have work, and I don't want to spend a lot of money. So let's get started. So the first thing I did was I went into the bathroom and I measured and to kind of lay out and kind of get a plan. And then I just sketched it on a piece of paper so that I kind of had an idea um, of where I was going before I got started. A couple of tools that you're going to need. Adjustable end wrench. Then I've got this half inch ratcheting wrench. And I'll get to that in a minute. Some channel lock pliers. A big flathead screwdriver. I told you earlier I used the tape measure. We're going to be using PEX tubing today. And so this is a special tool. This is the PEX tube cutter. This is a PEX tube. This is a special tool for shark bite fittings. This kind of helps you make sure that you get your fitting all the way on. Plus it prepares the end so there's no burrs causing any turbulence. The three fittings I've chosen to use today are a T-line so I can tap into the existing water line leading to the toilet. This ball valve, which is probably overkill, but I wanted to be able to completely shut off the um, water flow to the handheld sprayer. If we're not right there, um, this is once again overkill. Maybe it's an optional but I decided that this was important enough that I wanted to put this ball valve on there so I could completely shut the water off. And then the way is, this one's interesting, this is going to be a shark bite fitting for the PEX tube side, and then we've got um, pipe fitting on the other side, and this is what will screw the hose of the handheld sprayer onto. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the bathroom and I'm going to pull the toilet. Now, this repair, depending on the layout of your plumbing and the toilet in your bathroom and how much space you have, you may not need to do it. That pulling the toilet could be completely optional. But I found that if I can get that toilet out of the way, it's so much easier and it goes so much faster. You know what only takes just a second to pull a toilet? I'll show you. So it's super easy to remove a toilet. All you have to do is follow these four steps. The first step is you want to make sure you turn off your water pump. The second step is you're going to want to locate the caps covering the bolts. There's going to be one on each side of the toilet. You just use a flathead screwdriver to pop those caps right off. Next, you'll be taking a wrench 
to unscrew the bolts that are holding the toilet to the floor. Once again, the left side and the right side. After you've removed the bolt, making it easier to remove the connection between the supply line and the toilet. So all you have to do is locate that, undo it. Now, when you undo the supply line, there's gonna be a little bit of pressurized water left in the line. Make sure you have a towel handy to kind of mop that up. Once you've done that, your toilet's free. All you have to do is pull straight up and remove the toilet and get it out of your way. Now you don't need the bucket. I just thought this was really convenient to have an extra um, bucket that I could set the toilet on while I worked on it. The reason is, is because I just barely replaced the seal. So I didn't want to get the seal dirty by setting it down on the ground. And so I, this way I can keep all the dirt off of the seal by putting it on this bucket. So originally my RV's plumbing was all done with PEX tubing in those plastic parts. And I apologize, I can't remember what those kind of plastic parts are called. But as I do repairs, upgrades, and replacements, I'm going to be switching over to two different types. I'm going to be using the crimp style fittings and the shark bite type fittings. And the reason is I'm going to be using those two is because both of those, all of the parts I need, plus the PEX tubing, I can pick up at my local Home Depot, which is really close to my house. It's so convenient. Otherwise, I'd be going to an RV store to pick up those plastic replacement parts, and those are kind of expensive. So it just seems like I can get good parts locally, easy, at my Home Depot store. No need to go to the RV store. So all the fittings I'm using, the tubing I'm fitting, the, the pipe fittings, everything I'm using today is half inch to half inch. So we've got the toilet out of the RV. We've cleared the space. Now, what I like to do is build the parts or anything that I can do outside of the RV, I'll do outside and then um, we'll take anything that we can build out here, take it in and put it in there. Now, I just got off the radio with Holly and she said she'll be back in about an hour. No time for us to goof around. So what I've got to do is I'm going to be cutting this PEX tubing with this cutter I have. And the trick to cutting PEX tubing is you want to make sure you get it as, this is a ratcheting style cutter. Your goal is to get as close to a 90 degree cut as possible. Now, the cutter is designed to really help you get a 90 degree cut. Now, you don't, it doesn't have, it could be 89, it could be, you know, just a couple of degrees off, but get it as close to the 90 degrees as possible. So, it's, according to my plans, I need a six inch part and a three inch part. So let me measure that. Of course, your layout's gonna be completely different than mine. But all you really need to be concerned with is that you're cutting as close to 90 degrees as possible. So there's the six inch piece. There's the three inch piece. So then what, you can use this special tool. What this does is it deburs the edge. But when you use a ratcheting cutter like that one, it actually cleans it up pretty good. Just puts a little tiny bevel on it. We'll do that to both. The other thing about this tool that it does is it measures, and you draw a line, what that does is that when you go to put this on, is that you make sure you get it pushed in far enough because you want to go all the way up to that line. Okay, so I've marked up the three inch one. Let's do the six inch one. You'll see in just a second how easy this PEX tubing is. So I'm gonna get a mark on this longer piece. Okay, now we'll go to the other side. And 
and we'll mark that side. So let's go ahead and put these together. So I've got my T. That's all you have to do is push it on like that. And like that. Cool thing about shark bite stuff is that you can twist it. So if it's not exactly in the position that you want, you can you can turn it. So there's the piece. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in between that line. Water coming from the wall, from the pump. It'll now, first choice, go up to the handheld sprayer that we have. And then it'll go over a little bit further, then it'll go up to the toilet flush. Okay, so now we'll undo our little package here, and this will put the hose goes on. And according to the instructions, this side goes up against the handheld sprayer. This side that's got the hex markings, this goes against your plumbing. So there we are. We're going to tap into the water line right here. We've got our valve. This converts from PEX tubing up to the pipe fitting. Then we've screwed our um, flexible hose that goes to our handheld shower onto this side. Okay, here we go. Let's go put it in. So let's finish this project up. Here's the supply line. Now what we're going to do is measure. I want to bring this addition far enough out from the wall that it's hidden behind the toilet. So I'll mark where I'm going to cut. I'll make a cut. Now, be aware there's still water left in this line. So have your handy towel ready to mop it up. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to, we have to account for the one and a quarter inch that the Shark Bite T-fitting has. So we're going to remove that part from the flush end of the hose. We're going to treat both of the ends and mark our lines so we know how far to push the fit fittings onto. The first one we're going to do is we're going to push onto the supply side our new addition. And then the second step is then we'll push the flush side onto our new creation. Nice thing about shark bite fittings is you can move the shark bite fittings away and twist so that it makes it a little bit easier to work with. Now what we'll do is I'll just secure the new plumbing to the wall so that it doesn't flop around and then put the toilet back in. One thing about putting the toilet back in, it's all done in reverse of how you took it out. The one thing to be aware of is that when you tighten the bolts down, you tighten the left side a little bit, right side a little bit, and just keep doing it back and forth so you're not tightening one side down all at the same time. So this is the handheld sprayer that I chose. You've got this, this is the variable pressure lever. So let's check it out. There's a low pressure. Here's a high pressure. Now you can imagine that that will create a clean toilet. It's that low pressure, high pressure, just enough, and it will keep your, it, it's amazing. It will keep your toilet bowl so much cleaner. So I just barely finished putting the toilet in, hooking up the handheld sprayer, testing it out, and cleaning up. You know, I, I'm pretty impressed with the way that it worked. I really think it's gonna be a good upgrade. But it's not me we're trying to impress, it's Holly. Now, she'll be here in about 10 minutes. So, we'll wait and see what she thinks. I'll keep my fingers crossed. So I've got a little bit more cleaning up to do. I'll see you in a few minutes. 
So Holly, what do you think? Tell me the truth. Oh my gosh, I am so excited. That works better than I ever imagined. You know, when you first told me that you were gonna do this, I'm like, okay, well, yeah, let's give it a try. It's amazing. The pressure from that hose is awesome. This is really a game changer. And can I just say, out of all the repairs that you have ever done, I love this one. You know, there's something about having a nice, clean toilet. So thanks, babe. So the specific sprayer I bought is this, I got this on Amazon. Yeah, I think it's AA Bay is what they call it. You know, there's dozens of different sprayers. Just beware when you're shopping for sprayers. And I'll tell you the things, the features that were the most important to me about why I chose this one. So the hose and the fittings on the end of the hose were metal plated with chrome. You know, I bought one a little earlier. It was just a $10 cheapo and I thought I could get away cheap. But the funny thing is the hose and the ends of the hose were plastic um, with painted a chrome color on the outside. And they didn't, they were, the threading didn't even fit the pipe threading that I had on my plumbing fixtures. So I had to toss that one out and go with a little bit more expensive. This one right here, I believe I spent, I think it was $24.99 or something like that. I'll leave a link to it in the description below if you'd like to check out the one that I bought. The other feature that was important to me in addition to the metal fittings was the thumb lever was a variable pressure thumb lever. It wasn't just an on off. It was designed to be, if you push a little bit on it, you get low pressure. If you push all the way down, you get high pressure. And I was looking for the ability to go from low pressure to high pressure to help rinse out the toilet to do its job. So I've been pleased with this one since I put it in. So if you'd like to check it out, it's in the description below. So in today's video, my goal was to be able to show you in concept how I did this repair or this upgrade. You know, with as many different varieties of RVs that are out there, and even from manufacturer to manufacturer and year to year, just the changes in the layout and the specifics and how each of these, these rigs are designed, that's why I can't give you specific measurements. But my hope was is that I could show you in concept how I did it. That way you can take a look at your own rig if you choose to do an RV upgrade or repair like I did and um, use the same concept and then use specific measurements and layouts and specifics for your own rig. Good luck with that. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment below. I'll um, try to answer as many of those as possible. I think this is probably one of the biggest things I've done to improve our old RV. It really did make a huge difference. And so, you know, if you enjoyed the video today and you got some value out of it, please give us a big thumbs up. We really do appreciate that. And you know, if you like videos like this, if you're into camping, into RVing, and you really love the outdoors, consider subscribing to our channel for more videos all about camping. You know, I'm John with Let's Go Now Adventures, and I'll see you on the next adventure. Bye-bye.